Hi and welcome to my channel. In this video I am going to be talking you through what kind of plans we have in place, what happened with our submission for plan and permission, that was quite the epic story in itself. I'm also going to show you the architectural drawings that we've had drawn up. These aren't the absolute finalised versions but they're pretty close and then I am going to do a little walk around the house and show you exactly what I'm talking about. I am also gonna go outside into the back garden to show you the outside of the house as well so you can really get a good idea about what space we've got to play with. If you are thinking about doing your own home extension then please do click the subscribe button below. This is going to be the first video in a whole series of videos that I'm going to be doing about our building work. I'll start off by talking a little bit about planning. Now, to be honest, the whole getting the planning permission thing has taken so much longer than we ever anticipated it would do and it's just been a real battle to be honest. We got some architectural plans drawn up first which gave us an idea of what kind of space we could potentially play with, how we could fit in our requirements like the playroom, like the walk-in wardrobe, the ensuite utility room etc. So we applied for planning permission from our local authority at the beginning of June 2018 and we are now in May 2019 and we only actually got the planning permission granted in March 2019. So it's taken almost a year to get planning permission. One thing that I would definitely say for anybody that's thinking about doing building work is to get your planning permission in as soon as possible. We got a plan together that we were really happy with and that plan was to go out four point two meters to the side. There is an example of a four meter extension or just over four meter extension just round the corner and also we were compliant with current building regulation guidelines. So we submitted our plans to the council for 4.2 meters and they basically came back and said no this is way too big. We counter argued that point with the fact that there's an existing example which is just around the corner in a cul-de-sac which is like a tiny little street for anybody that doesn't know what a cul-de-sac is and they said no that doesn't matter it's non-comparable which was really confusing and they started to quote different guidelines to the ones that have been used since 2002. Anyway we wanted to compromise, we re-looked at the plans and we worked out that to have everything that we wanted still inside we could go to a minimum of 3.7 meters rather than the 4.2. So we got our plans redrawn and resubmitted. Again, they said absolutely not, this is too big, we can have 3.3 metres. Now 3.3 metres was definitely not going to give us the room inside to be able to do what we wanted to do with the inside. We argued back and said our reasonings such as we wanted the playroom door to lead into the kitchen. If it was any smaller we'd have to put the playroom door by the front door which is not ideal if you've got a young child that is learning how to open doors. And also there were certain things that we couldn't do in a 3.3 meter extension like my walk-in wardrobe would have been one of the things to you know take the plunge off the cliff like a lemming and I wasn't prepared to let that go without a fight but the council ended up rejecting completely our plans so we had no other alternative but to go through the appeals process. Now in my local authority the appeals process is really long and drawn out, it's quite complicated, there's a lot of paperwork to fill in, it was very daunting at first but we really did feel justified in putting in the appeal and thought that we had a good chance of winning it. We submitted our appeal, I think it was round about Jan February, you know, the beginning of February and then it was just a waiting game. But it's an independent inspector that comes out and look at every appeals case. 
on its own merit after reviewing all of the paperwork that's submitted. So the independent guy came out, you absolutely cannot speak to them, cannot influence them in any way, shape or form. And then within two weeks, we got a letter saying that we'd won our appeal. I'm not gonna lie, I burst into tears because it had been that much of a long-winded process. So the relief really did just come pouring out when we got that letter. It was amazing news and it meant that we could actually do what we wanted to do to our home to make it functional for our growing family. Oh, hello. Anyway, that's where we are now. So we have some plans right here and it should help you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So as you can see, it's quite a standard 1960s house. We have a flat roof extension already on the bottom here. I think that was done in the 80s. And this bottom drawing is a side elevation view of the house. So that's basically if you were stood at the side of the house, you can see that flat roof extension to the back of the property. So that's in our back garden. So as you can see, we've got the back door and the little window up there, which is the window at the top of the stairs. This is the view of our existing downstairs we have the kitchen dining area which is where I have been just filming this video and you can see the downstairs extension on the back originally the house only went up to here so that's already an addition and then we have our living room which kind of goes in an L shape you have our small hallway as you come into the house that leads either straight to the kitchen or into our living room. The stairs to go upstairs, clearly. This door here is the back door which leads into the kitchen and that you saw on the side elevation of the house. This is the roof of the flat roof extension. If you were looking out of the upstairs windows, we've got the box room, that's the smallest bedroom. Then we have the spare room. Then we have this bedroom here and a family bathroom here. This is the landing and the stairs just kind of curve up in an L shape. This window here is the window that you saw on the side elevation. Right, so here are the plans including the extension. So as you can see, the extension comes this far from the side of the house. We're gonna have a new porch put on the front. This will be Theo's playroom, which will be the brand new room. And this will be our big bedroom upstairs. This is the bathroom currently, which will stretch across a little bit further. From the back, originally we wanted two windows up here, so it looked a little bit more symmetrical, but unfortunately we're not gonna be able to do that, but never mind, it's a small compromise to make, but we're gonna pitch the roof so that we can put the skylights on top. Then we're gonna put bifold doors along the back. Then the side elevation here, obviously there's this window which is going to be in our bedroom. You can see the pitched roof coming down the back. We've got the back door and then we're gonna have like a little bay window which is going to be Theo's playroom. We're coming out slightly to include the porch. So we're gonna have a nice big porch because the hallway is a little bit of an issue as it is right now. But again, I'll show you what I mean by that. We have the utility room and little downstairs loop which just comes straight through from the back door we have the playroom down there upstairs we have this pitched roof with the three velox windows this is going to be our huge master bedroom i am so excited with the ensuite the walk-in wardrobe area and there's a little window there letting light into the walk-in wardrobe you saw that from the side elevation we are making the bathroom bigger so we want to have a standalone bath a separate shower toilet and i love double sinks that is totally a us thing i am obsessed with so that's something that we really want in the family bathroom and then these bedrooms were the ones that were there before so these aren't changing we've got the pitched roof that comes out 
for the porch. That's what it's gonna look like. I am so excited because this is exactly what we need. Okay, so I've shown you the plans on paper. I've talked you through our planning issues. Now I'm going to take you on a little tour just so you can get an idea of the layout right now. I am in our back garden, so outside of the back of our house. And I am gonna show you now what kind of space we've got to play with. Anyway, I am gonna jump behind the camera now and just show you what I'm talking about. We have a lot of room that takes us up to the boundary. I will take the camera down there in a second to show you, but we have quite a steep embankment on the side there that we're gonna level off and it will just make it look even bigger going right the way across. We have planning permission to build 3.7 meters so it's going to be quite a large extension. We have an existing extension right here that was built well before we moved in so the whole side of the house is going to come right out like this and this extension here is just going to continue across the back. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take off the flat roof that you can see there and we're going to put a pitched roof onto it that comes down from these window, the bottom of these windows. What we're going to have to do is brick up part of this window so it's kind of level with the other one. In that pitched roof we're going to have like skylights called velux windows i think and they there will be three one around about here one around about here in the middle and then another one towards the end so i think that'll be a really nice feature here's the area to the side that i was talking about that has the embankment and it's really interesting to see what that's going to be like once it's leveled out with the rest of the grass that we have here this is the existing kitchen so this is where the house would have originally finished so we're gonna go right out and in this area i think we'll probably be the um, utility room and the downstairs loo because the downstairs loo is going to be in the utility room and the utility room can be accessed from the back door there and obviously there'll be an internal door. This is a nice space already but it's just going to be really big, it's going to go right the way along down towards you and outside basically. We want to get a bigger dining room table than this, although I really like this table, it'd be quite nice to get a big table so we can sit more than four people at a time. So that's the plans for this room. This is our living room, it comes off the kitchen which is just there. Theo's toys are in here and they're kind of taking over a little bit, we've got some more down there and a couple of toy boxes here. It's not overwhelming at all but I think as he gets older he's gonna be getting more and more toys probably so it'll be nice for him to have his own playroom somewhere that he can go and that all of his stuff is right there obviously other than his bedroom that's the thought behind that this room is staying pretty much the same I might do a little bit of redecoration here and there but on the whole we're not going to touch this room to the extent that we're going at the rest of the house so it'll stay pretty pretty much the same as it already is. This is our hall here. Lucy is just modeling in the middle of it. At the moment, it's really, really slim and narrow. It's great for just when it was just me and Chris, but getting a pram down there, not that Theo goes in the pram really that much anymore, was quite challenging to say the least. So what we're gonna do is take that whole front door frame and the side windows off and we're going to have the porch that kind of protrudes right out of the front there which will give us just that bit more area to play with so that will just be opened up it will be a big porch coming into the main house and we've got plans to have big double doors it's a bit of a shame because that front door is actually really nice but i think it'll be so much better the playroom door will be along this wall somewhere so it will come into the kitchen this is the area just going round the corner to go up the stairs. I am only showing you this because of my little triumphant air plants that I've got going on there. 
These are the stairs. The kitchen door is just over there and I was showing you. You kind of get an idea of how narrow it really is down here. This is the top of the stairs. So this is our landing and that's the side window that you see from the side elevation. We are going to be going right out that way. As you can see, well you can't really, but we've got two little steps that come up to the landing area. So we're gonna have the same on that side that will come up and go into the master bedroom, which will go right the way across the side of the house like that. So that's the way it's gonna look. You come up the stairs and then you can either go left into our brand new bedroom of dreams or right onto the landing. We have our current bedroom, spare room there, and Theo's bedroom. I'm gonna film this bathroom part vlog style because the bathroom is a little bit small to be fitting my tripod in, but I'm just standing at the doorway and walking in. This is our bathroom right now. So there's the loo down there and we have the sink. I absolutely hate these doors the the worst of life. The sink keeps leaking on the top at the moment. It's a real pain. So just coming up to the little bathroom mirror. We're gonna move this wall right the way back, quite a substantial way back. So it'll definitely be much longer because we want to have a his and hers double sink. Instead of having a bath with a shower in there, you can tell I've got kids, look at all of this paraphernalia. Um, so instead of having this, we're going to have a standalone bath and then we want a standalone shower as well. So this was another reason that we wanted the 3.7 meters because we desperately wanted to make this family bathroom bigger. Bringing you into our bedroom, it's pretty narrow and I absolutely hate having the bed in front of the window. We want to rip out these fitted wardrobes because they take up so much room, too much room for this room especially. And then we'll be able to put the bed over there, like by that back wall instead of right in front of the window. But obviously this isn't gonna be our bedroom. It potentially might be Theo's bedroom when he's a little bit older or a guest bedroom. Here I am back in the kitchen again. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see how everything is coming along, then please do remember to subscribe because this will become a series. If you've liked this video, then please do give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye.